Hi friends, and I hope this finds you well on this, the first Sunday after Easter. As we are still in lockdown and we find out that lockdown is to continue for another at least another three weeks. So we find ourselves unable to join together in old Gurik and Ashton. And as usual, we'll be putting this video onto our Facebook page. And also you can find it through the church website and also on the YouTube channel at OG and A Church, Parish Church. So all you need to put in OG and A Parish Church. So here today, here we are at this the Sunday, the first Sunday after Easter. And our, as we followed John's leading readings through the Easter story, so we're going to continue in John's post-resurrection journeys. The first reading is from John chapter 19, John chapter 20, and reading verses 19 through to verse 31. And it's to do with really the whole idea of Jesus appearing to Thomas. Hear the word of God. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the door locked for the fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. And then, if you receive anyone in his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we've seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again. Thomas was with them. Though the door was locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by, le by believing you may have life in his name. Amen and thanks be to God for this reading. The interaction with Thomas, I think, is such a wonderful piece of of theatre within the context of the gospel. The setup is put in place that Jesus appeared to the disciples. Thomas was missing. He'd, bled, he'd missed out on it. He'd missed the chance. And you can understand his frustration. All the rest of them had seen Jesus and he hadn't. And he's always given the title Doubting Thomas. And yet, for many years in my ministry, I've always said it's Thomas I think I identify with most of all in this narrative of the Gospels, because I think Thomas is where we are. We all have that element of doubt, and it's sometimes portrayed doubt, questioning is portrayed as a weakness, and yet it's not. In his wonderful book, The Courage to Doubt, by Professor Robert Davison, he explores the, the theme of doubt in the Old Testament, because in the Old Testament, you have the doubts of Moses as to whether or not he will to read the, lead the people in the Exodus. There are doubts expressed through the Psalms. There are the doubts and questions of Job and, of course, Jonah, who seeks to run away. There's also doubts expressed within the context of the prophets in Jeremiah and Isaiah. So it is an Old Testament theme of question and doubt. And Thomas is continuing that theme. But what Jesus is doing here is taking away the doubt and healing the relationship. Just now, as we face the horrors of coronavirus, the uncertainty and the dangers that are associated with it, we have doubts and questions in our minds. When we see some of the people it's affecting, when we see some of the issues that are coming up, why and how, and yet what we are called to do by God is to believe is to believe that he will see us through us. 
that to believe that he'll be with those who are suffering most. To believe and put our trust and faith in him. Thomas believes when he sees. And Jesus said, blessed are those who won't, who will still believe, even though they don't see. It is natural for us at times like this to have doubts and questions. But it is also important that we recognise that in these doubts and in these questions, our faith can be formed and reformed and re-strengthened and refocused in the understanding of what we are called to do, to share God's love, to be the people of God, to reach out to others, to take away their doubts. I'm always wary of anyone who tells me that they've got all the answers, that those who say that they know certain things about their faith. Faith, I believe, is at the cutting edge of doubt and question and our relationship with God. It's okay to doubt. It's okay to question. Because in these processes, we come to know the full realisation of the gift of the living Saviour that is Jesus Christ. Let's come before God. Let's pray. Eternal God, in this post-Eastern season, which is springtime in some parts of the world and autumn in others, we pray for those who are at time of new beginning in their lives and those approaching an end. We remember those today who are struggling with the reality of the coronavirus, families living in uncertain times, the difficulties of this age, the questions and doubts that are brought to mind because of uncertainty of employment, of financial difficulties. Lord, we bring all these things to you. For some, the Easter message will be easy to embrace if they're celebrating a birth or recovering from illness, or an escape from danger, or the opening of an unexpected new opportunity. There'll be others who are still in the agony of Good Friday, the empty silence of Saturday, because a loved one has died and will not be returning the side of eternity. Lord, if our faith is to be real, it has to be for the dark days as well as the bright ones. It has to, as those who represent the risen Christ in our world today, we pray that we may be rigorous in our thinking, honest in our speaking, genuine in our testimony to what we believe and the difference that makes, the difference it makes to the whole of life. May we hold together our doubting and believing, valuing both for the gifts that they are. We pray for those who have been let down by the church through a betrayal of church trust or a failure of honesty, that they've been told that in order to take part in the adventure of faith, they all have to do this to believe or do that to believe. But faith is like love. It cannot be commanded. It can only be lived, can only be tested by experience. Father, we pray for all who are searching for faith and th those who think that they have found it, that they may respectively be reassured and shaken out of complacency. For those who have been let down in the past, that they may take the risk of trusting again and find that you are worthy of our trust. For those who are grieving, that they may find comfort in their Easter faith and companions in those who, like Thomas, struggle sometimes to believe what other people think we should, but who have dared to believe in the indestructible power of love and found that love embodied in the reality of Christ. Father, we pray for all in the front line of the fight against coronavirus today. We thank you for all who are working hard in our society to seek to make life better for others. We pray that you may bless all in their time of isolation, that they may know that in that journey they are not alone, but that you are their constant companion, friend and saviour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. So friends, we continue in our period of isolation. I will be posting something else on where another thought for the day on Wednesday and then also this format that we've developed for each Sunday coming. I hope that you continue to stay safe and well and look after yourselves. 
I hope, maybe like me, you're also struggling with the reality of the need for urgent hairdressing assistance. And just in case you are thinking it, no, I'm not letting Shona cut it, no matter how long it gets. So st wherever you are, stay safe, stay well, look out for each other, phone each other, take care of each other, and thank you for being you.